As we draw near the end of this class, it's interesting to think about how we think about evolution today, how we think about the most recent evolution of humans. Not the evolution that made us humans, but the evolution that's going on now as we are humans. Now we know that with the origin of agriculture, the beginnings of sedentary lifestyles, the domestication of animals and crops, that this is a co-evolutionary process. Those plants evolve part and parcel along with us. As we changed our behaviors, the plants and animals that we've domesticated have changed. As they've changed, we've changed how we've cultivated them. In other words, we've been co-evolving along with the domesticated organisms that we've been domesticating. This might mean that one powerful metaphor for thinking about very recent evolution is that we've been domesticating ourselves. Think about it. At the beginning of the Pleistocene, we saw an expansion in the human niche associated with increased sociality, increased reliance on each other, the beginning of behavioral cultural practices. By the time we get to the end of the Pleistocene, we see massive expanses in the degree of sociality of individuals. Suddenly, we're not just moving and living together in small groups, but beginning to live permanently in places, in much larger groups. This requires a tremendous tolerance for other people, the ability to tolerate and coexist and get along and live, most of the time at least, with other human beings. Much as the way that when we domesticate animals, such as dogs, we're selecting for a degree of tolerance, a degree of tolerance for us as individuals. There are striking and interesting parallels between skeletal change in very recent human populations, populations going back over the last 15,000 years, and what we see in domesticated animals. Most notably, our skeletons have gotten more gracile. The robustity of our bones themselves has actually decreased. We've become more gracile. Now, part of this might reflect changes in energetic patterns and activity patterns, but some of it might simply suggest that domestication of ourselves has gone on. So as we've been domesticating the organisms around us, we've been domesticating ourselves. The increased tolerance, increased sociality, increased behavioral reliance on other individuals all reflects potentially a process of domestication. So while it's tempting to think that we as humans are masters of the universe, cultivators of the world's garden, controller and shepherd of the world's plants and animals, maybe we're also a cultivator, shepherd, and master of ourselves in the same way. Maybe we've been domesticating ourselves alongside those plants and animals that we eat every day. Maybe we've been domesticating ourselves and therefore have increased our own abilities to get along with each other, to tolerate each other, to coexist, to rely and depend on other individuals as if they're our own. So this notion of a domesticated human species, that in the Pleistocene we become human, and after the Pleistocene we become domesticated humans, is an important and interesting way to think about evolution in action today. How evolution has not just made us humans, but how evolution is still making us human, and how evolutionary processes are still in effect in human populations today.